Hey guys, I hope you're having an absolutely incredible day today. So I have someone in my community right now who has a problem and it's that I built out this auto poster to Pinterest and that uses Flux, which has pretty great image generation, right? File AI if you want to find it and you can connect directly to the API, which is what this build was done. And so he's trying to implement Midjourney because he believes that Midjourney has better quality images and there's no actual API for Midjourney. So you actually kind of have to do a workaround. You can create your own. And, and so I found three solutions. The first one is called Imagine API. So for Imagine API, you need a Midjourney account. So you'll have to subscribe for one of those. It costs $10 a month at the base price and it goes upwards based on your usage. And then you'll also need an Imagine API dev account, which comes at $30 a month. So all in all, you're looking at $40 to get this set up and running. Then I came across Imagine Pro.ai. So it also offers the exact same thing except instead of needing that mid journey account, they just have a one tiered package, $49 a month, you get 1600 credits and you get instant API access. You don't need a discord account. You can just connect directly to this and get started. So in terms of ease of setup, this one is the easiest, but it comes at $49 per month as their base tier. And if you don't use all 1600 credits then you're kind of losing out on your money. And then lastly, I came across this tool called userapi.ai. There are a few different packages. The reason I like it is because you can start off for free and then you can scale to pay per request or also get these different plans that are cheaper than the other alternative that was mentioned here. So all in all, I think this is the best solution. It just comes with a bit of setup that you have to do. And today we're going to be doing that. We're going to be building that setup from scratch so you can generate images like this just by an API call with a Google sheet and it'll create a Pinterest post. So pretty cool. So you're going to come on over to Midjourney, log in or sign up. It should prompt you to bring you to Discord. And when you come into Midjourney, you just see this little boat here. You'll see that there are a lot of images already being generated. And if you are new to this, then you will have to pay for an account. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our own server. So you're going to come down here, you're going to click add a server and you're going to go on create my own. Now you want to select for me and my friends and you're going to name it something. So I'm going to name mine, make Pinterest MJ for mid journey. You can go ahead, upload a photo and, oh, or you can just hit create. Awesome. So now your server has been created. Now the next step we want to do is come up to here. We want to edit the channel and click into permissions. And we just want to set this to private just so you can control who's being added to this group and not anyone can add it and start generating images. All right, we can go ahead. We can back out of here. And now that we've done that, we can head back into our mid journey and within mid journey on the bot, you can click on his name right here, bot, and you're going to click add app and then add to server. And then we're going to select that server that we just created and hit continue, hit authorize, Granted all the access that it needs. Confirm you are a human. Beautiful, it's been created. So now we're gonna go to the, back to that server that we just made. And you should see now that Midjourney bot has hopped into the server. Awesome. So you can see right here that we can already get access to it. If we hit slash, I'm just going to create a new text channel and we are gonna call it the same thing. So make Pinterest Midjourney and we'll hit create on that new text channel. Beautiful. All right guys, so now we're gonna come into that channel. We'll hit permissions and we'll set it to private. You can hit save changes and then we need to add some members. So we're going to add both the roles and the members. We'll hit done. Awesome. And now you'll see it. Mid journey bot is in this channel and you could type in, you know, slash imagine. And then right here you get access to the prompt and you can just go ahead and type in anything that you want to test it out make sure that it's working. So beautiful balcony view. You can see it's waiting to start here. And now that'll start to get created. And now it's very important that you do all of this within your browser. And the reason for that is because we need to be able to grab the authorization code to, to connect our API. So up at the top here, you should see first slash, and then you should see a second slash. So we're going to go ahead and copy both of those and you can just save them to a notepad as we are going to need them in a bit. You can see that it has now been generated. This looks amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to type slash info. And before we hit slash info, we're going to press 
control shift J. And what that's going to do is open up our developer console and we're going to click on over to the right and click on network and we can press control R. So now it's recording the incoming activity. And now we're going to come back here. We're going to type in slash info. And when we hit enter in a second, we should see some requests come through. So we're sending that right now. And you'll see that we get this interactions API call right here, right? So we're going to click on that. And so if we just scroll down just a little bit down to request headers, we'll see right here authorization. And right next to that authorization is going to be your authorization key. Very important. So you're going to want to go ahead and copy that information. Just save that to the notepad. And then you'll also have a user ID right here that I would recommend copying and pasting into your notepad as well. All right. Awesome. So now that that is complete, we're going to head on over to user API.ai. We're going to hit get started and you're going to sign up and then you're, you're greeted with a screen like this and you'll see that all of the information that we just saved, such as the token, the channel ID, we're just going to populate that right here. You can choose the type of plan that you want. I'm going to stick on the free plan. Now your API key should have already been auto populated. And now that step is done. We are now ready to hop into make and create our scenario. You're going to add Google sheets. And the first sheet is going to be search row and you'll go ahead and make your Google sheet connection. So just hit add sign in like you normally would to Google. And then from there, we're going to have to select our spreadsheet. So I'm actually going to create the spreadsheet now. So name it what you want. I'm going to call it list full ideas. And then you're going to need ID. You're going to need the image prompt. You're going to need the status and that should be it. So you can put a bunch of numbers in here, set status to not posted. And then for the image prompt, you're going to put in whatever you want, right? So let's say a beautiful, or let's say a modern office setup. And what you can do is you can have chat GPT, create and fill all of these out and just come and paste them in here. I'm just going to keep it nice, simple. And we're going to say a modern office. And so now if we come back into our make scenario, and we look for that sheet, we'll click on listicle ideas, choose the sheet. So sheet one, in this case, you can set the uh, column range to A to Z, unless you plan on having more. The status is going to be the filter equal to not posted. So that's what we wanted to grab. And then we're going to sort in ascending order by ID. And the field type is going to be number. And we're going to return one result at a time. And then once that's done, we'll come back into our Google Sheets. And we'll just select this data range and make sure instead of it being automatic, that it's numbered. There we go. So that is complete. Perfect. And then we'll want to update that row. So we'll come in here, Google Sheets, update a row. So once again, navigate to where that spreadsheet is. And then the row number, we're going to choose row number. The table contains headers, yes. And then we're going to switch the status to posted so that we know that it actually posted. And if you wanted to make sure if this actually works, you could just run it once. And if you go back to listicle ideas, it'll now show that posted status. Awesome. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we're going to want to do is create our connection to user API.ai. So the good news is, is that they have their own module already created within make. That's why make is so great because of the community and because of the amount of modules that are already in this existing software. So we're going to click on imagine for this. And there are a bunch of different options that you can do. You can also upscale after you can zoom out. You know, there's there's different things or you can actually make an API call if you want. So for this, we're just going to keep it simple. We're just going to imagine and we're going to paste in our API key, which is right here. So we're going to copy that head back into our make scenario and then just save that. And I'm going to name this as well. At the same time, we'll call it the interest posting mid journey. Now the prompt to generate the image is going to be the image prompt from step B from our first step. Now the webhook type, we're just going to set it to post data once when generation is complete instead of posting it every single time, because as the percentage of it completes, it'll send you, you know, webhooks or notifications. And we don't want that. We just want it to be once when the generation is complete. And so right now, if we run this, it's going to generate our image. That image will then be captured here and it'll show the status of running. But the issue is, is that if we add an upscale directly after, right? If we were to come down here and choose upscale, what's going to happen is it's going to quickly jump to the upscale and the image generation won't be complete. And so in order to wait for that to be completed, we're going to create another make scenario. So come down here, hit say everything that you need to do here is now set up and we're going to back out for a second and create a new scenario. And this, we're just going to add a custom webhook name it again, journey Pinterest posting part two, we're going to add our new webhook, we'll call it the journey. Imagine, and we're going to get this URL, we're going to copy that URL, 
it's important copy it I'm gonna save this workflow now I'm gonna back out of this scenario we're gonna to head to the other scenario so let's head back into our current scenario and then we're gonna paste that webhook URL into here so now when this has finished it'll post directly to this URL and trigger the next set of actions which is going to be the upscale the image and so now we'll head into our part two and we'll add in the user API and we will want to upscale it and then we are also going to need to now get some data in here so what we can do is open up both scenarios just like that perfect and we're gonna come in here we're gonna hit run once you can go ahead you can unlink these two for right now we're gonna hit save head back into here we're gonna run this once now you can see it grabbed it successfully it sent it over to our imagine and now you can see here guys that it's currently in progress and so once that image has finished generating here done you should see that that webhook now has results right and that's the results that were passed so now if we reconnect this we should be able to just select hash as the hash of the task that needs to be upscaled and then for the position of the image that needs to be upscaled right the way it works is look at the results here look at our url download the output bundle grab the url and paste that in you can see that four images are generated so we have to choose which of the four we want now if we were building this out to another level i would suggest having the user select which option they like the best now in this case to keep things simple this is one this is two this is three and this is four so i'm just going to have it set to two i like number two but in the future every single one that i choose will be number two so if you want to add more flexibility into your system, then I would suggest this is where you connect it to Airtable, send those results to Airtable as a custom image and you decide, right? And so now that that's done, we're going to create our third mid journey portion scenario. So go ahead, create a new scenario. We'll call this mid journey interest part three. Same thing. We're going to add the webhook, custom webhook. We will add a new webhook and it's going to be a journey scale. Okay, we'll copy that address to clipboard. Now we can come back into our part two closing. We can paste in that URL that we just created. Hit OK. And save and hit OK here as well. And now that we have that upscaled image, we'll be going ahead and actually posting that to Pinterest. So I have another video where I detail how you can get your own interest connected here because there are a few steps involved. It's not as simple as hitting add and connecting to your account. So if you're interested in that, then search up Pinterest on my page and you'll be able to find how you can do this. And if you are looking to just quickly jump into scenarios like this, I do have a school community where I have this blueprint as well as plenty more all around content creation and real world applications for how you can integrate AI into your daily life. So we're going to go Pinterest. We're going to grab a board or get a board. And after that, we're going to want to create our post. So we're going to go create a pin again, connect to the same account. Source type is going to be an image URL image URL. We're going to have to generate some data through here to get that image. And the board ID is going to be the board ID from the previous step. So we can just map it getting a board and choosing ID. And then you can put in a title as well as a description. Once again, this is where I would implement table because you can put in control all of that directly from Airtable rather than having AI generate everything for you. You have more control over it and the quality of the output All right so i just put in a title and a description i hit okay it looks like we will have to unlink this and now we're going to run it everything at once so we're going to hit save we're going to hit run once here I'll hop into part two we're going to run that once we're going to wait for new data we'll hop into here just make sure that this is set to not posted we can run this as well now everything should process so you can see right here the status is currently waiting now it's in progress so that's complete it's going to hit webhooks part two and it's going to upscale our image that we wanted to, and after that send it through to here and eventually post that pin so now you can see that it was a success upscales done we also have the results of that url we grab that pinterest board successfully and now we should be able to make that final connection and create that pin so once again it's going to be an image url now we have the actual image url it's just going to be the results url right here and for the board you can just turn on map and we'll set the board ID from the previous step. Again, put in a title and description. So it's like that, we'll hit okay, save. Now we are going to run this one final time. So run this once, we'll run this once. And then lastly, we'll come into here. We'll set this back to not posted. We'll run this once. Now, if we come into our Pinterest, look at that. Now see this posted, beautiful home office. Check out this beautiful home office. As we can see that, it's just incredible. So that's how you can post directly to Pinterest 
completely automated, pretty incredible. Simple too. The hardest thing I'd say was uh, scored part at the beginning. If you did get value out of this, I really appreciate if you dropped a subscribe. Completely free and it really helps support the channel and allows me to continue making videos like this for you. Hope you have an incredible day. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.